Hey, what's up everybody? Tony of ETA with Timeshare Simplified here today. I wanted to do a quick video on how to rent out your timeshare because one of the biggest questions I get asked a lot from people <clears throat> from my YouTube videos and everything is how, how exactly do you rent out your timeshare? So let's go ahead and get started. You, you can rent it. You can rent it if you own the timeshare. You can even rent your timeshare points if you have them. Um, you obviously got to check with your your developer group um, sometimes hidden in the documentations it says you can't rent them but for the most part nine ninety nine percent of them you can rent them no problem because they are real estate it, it, to a certain point you know there's you know exceptions to the rules and everything but uh, most of them you can rent it it's it's part of the uh, benefits of owning it and I have my whole business built on it my primary business we do Marriott timeshare rentals and now we're expanding into the other one so you can rent it. I started with me and my buddy on 24 weeks at the Jockey Club, and that's how I got started doing it. Uh, we just, uh, my wife, um, she kept buying all these doTERRA oils, and I kept complaining about it, and I was selling timeshares, and then so she's like, well, I'll make extra money renting out our timeshares, and then our business just kind of grew and grew and grew um, using renting out timeshare points. So I just wanted to come with you today in case you want to do it on your own and uh, kind of give you some tips from my book uh, that are the easiest. Now, <clears throat> no matter which timeshare you own with, they, they only usually build them in good places. So just, it, just rent out the one you own because that's the easiest. Now, if you only own like a week's worth of points or a small amount of points, then pick one that you can rent out. Now, points is a little tricky because you could just list a resort uh, for rent and then just not do instant booking where people could book it right away and they could just request dates from you. And then, uh, and then you could log into your ownership account and see if those dates are available. Um, in my experience, though, most timeshares, it's hard to uh, get inventory or get reservations because most people book within 60 days so, so at some timeshares it's it's dang near impossible to book stuff within 60 days but not to say that it's not but that's one way you can do it if you want to get the maximum value out of it and get the most <clears throat> uh, for your rentals then uh, you want to try to book a major holiday uh, as far in advance as possible so you can make sure and get it. Like mo most timeshares, the weekends and the holidays are usually booked out pretty far. So sometimes you wanna book it as far as a year out, especially if you wanna get the most money because you wanna book like New Year's or you wanna book Christmas. And that doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get a rental either, but it increases your ch chances exponentially. So <clears throat> so your first, first thing you wanna do is is Google the name of your resort, okay? So like Google, you know, go to, um, you know, uh, so I'm gonna just, as an example, do the Marriott Newport Beach, California, uh, peak um, busiest times of the year. Okay, so just whatever your resort area is, say you own one at a ski resort. Well, obviously that's pretty easy. Best time to visit Newport Beach and they'll have all kinds of stuff on here. So best times is March 12th through November 25th. So that, so that gives you your busy season right there. All right, so you, if you wanna make the most money, um, busiest, so you wanna go when it's the busiest. So look, if you look in this chart right here, look, between June and September, June and the middle of August rather, so when the kids are out of school, that's the busiest time. So you wanna list your timeshare for rent uh, during these times of the year. Um, okay, so first thing is you got that. So, okay, so now you know, okay, I wanna book that, all right? So then you go over to Marriott and you go, um, Sunday, April 12th through the 19th, and you kinda get the prices from that. But say you pick the summer, all right? Go into the summer dates, how do I? Uh, uh, go into the summer dates so you can see, let me see if I can edit, okay, edit. Edit these dates. So say you're like, okay, I, I'm not gonna book that. I'm gonna book, um, I'm gonna book a summer week. So book the 14th through the 21st, and then. Uh, <clears throat> sorry if you hear the kids in the background. The only way I'll be able to make these videos is you gotta put up with that. All right. So 
look at. So Marriott Newport, so it's sold out during that, which is good, dates flexible. So you kind of just get an idea of what they're charging uh, for these you know, different times of the year. So you can check on there. Okay, so look, it, during the first week of June, they're charging $3,400, it's $3,600, $3,900. So if you can book a week at that resort, look at how much it's going for online and it's completely sold out on Marriott. And it's probably the exact same with your developer, whoever you own with. So now that gives you the retail price. Now you gotta determine your maintenance costs. So your maintenance costs, say on Newport Beach, I kind of know it offhand, is about seventeen or eighteen hundred dollars. So you want to charge somewhere between eighteen hundred and thirty-six hundred dollars. That's kind of your sweet spot. So you might want to charge, say, twenty-six hundred dollars. All right. So that way you're making money, and you're paying your maintenance fees. Okay. Now the second part is you need to list it somebody somewhere for rent. So Red Week's probably one of the biggest and best ways to list it uh, for rent. Oh, what was that? Sorry, <clears throat> chair got stuck. Okay, so you go to Red Week, type in the name of your, go, so go to Find Timeshare, go to Timeshare Rentals, type in the area, and then it'll bring up your resort. And then if you click on it, it'll bring up your competition. So you can see, and then you just click on this, view all timeshare rentals, all right? <clears throat> And then it'll list all the weeks. So then you scroll down. Um, okay, so 19 December. So I keep going. All right, so let's see, June. Uh, so it's loading. Okay, so see, you can see a lot of people obviously do this as well. Um, so you know there's a market for it. So look at these people. Here's your competition in here if you had booked June. So some people are charging anywhere from 1900 to 3500 a night, okay? So, I mean, you could get it rented because it's sold out and a lot of people want to stay there. Obviously, it's a very popular and because you're on Red Week, when people Google that area, Red Week's going to pop up. So they will see your ads. So, um, and then you can go up here and see what others are renting for. Look, this one rented for 2000 If it's grayed out, it shows you that they're rented. Um, <clears throat> 2,000, 1,400. Now, the only bad thing about Red Week is you, you're, you're typically, only other timeshare owners know about it, so they're looking for a week. Here's one for New Year's. Look, this one for 2,500. So if you notice, all the major holidays are rented. So if you do a major holiday, look, Christmas week, Christmas, New Year's, Christmas, New Year's, Christmas, New Year's, Christmas, New Year's. So if you book a major holiday, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get it rented. So you can put it on Red Week. Now, if you're gonna put it on Red Week, um, you just go here to rent or sell my timeshare, rent my timeshare. Uh, they have a do it yourself option. That's $30. You just press get started or do it yourself 45. Uh, and then they'll process the payments for you, the credit card, they'll send out a rental agreement for you. Um, and then they have this other program that's $60 up front, And then they take a $99 fee, but they pretty much do the whole rental for you pricing, guiding, professional management, dedicated phone support. So they got really good pricing on here. And then you need a, a Red Week membership, which is a $20, $19 as well. So, you know, all in all, you're into it about $200 if you do the full service option. And these ones, you're about 60 and 50. Um, so you can do it either way if you don't want to handle the, you know, because you'll get inquiries, you'll get people trying to, you know, get it for 2200 instead of the 2700 you advertise on it. People will message you, people expect responses back right away. So if you don't want to mess with that, um, you can do that. So <clears throat> that's one of your best options if you have a week and a popular destination where timeshare owners go. Red Week is great. Uh, one of my favorites that we use now is Airbnb. You know, they're the biggest hotel company in the world that doesn't own a hotel. So you can list anything on here, tents, RVs, boats, tree houses, whatever. Oh, here's a Bhutan festival, cliffside temple. Here's a teepee. <laughs> so they got everything on here. So you can list your timeshare on here as well. It's free. Um, you just go set up an account. Uh, let's see, profile, you know, just do an account, do a new account, get all set up in there. It doesn't take you very long. And then you just go add listing. And then, okay, and then you agree to that or whatever. They'll have, uh, you know, terms and services. So, and then you just want to do create new listing. All right. And then what you're going to want to do, oh, you got to hit next, sorry. 
<laughs> so you gotta hit next over here, and then it'll walk you through just step by step, entire place, uh, how many guests it sleeps. So if it's a two bedroom, you know, it sleeps six. Well, I'm Mexican, it sleeps like 12, but whatever. <laughs> and then you put the city that it's in, all right, and the city, and then just walk through step by step. And then what I what we do is we just kind of open, um, you know, Marriott. Oh, you, you can just go back to the hotel site actually, and then you can uh, uh, pull up the resort, pull up the resort, and then and then you can kind of just put the description in and stuff, and then just change the wording so it's not exactly like them. And then you can also do. Um, if you want pictures, just uh, just go to Marriott, Newport Beach, or whichever, you know, whoever you're doing, Wyndham or whatever, California. And then you can go on to images. And usually these are, you know, you'll find images of people that have taken them while they're staying there. So they're not necessarily copyrighted or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so you can find the picture. So just go through here and then, you know, right click you know, just save image as, and then, you know, save it to a folder or something, um, you know, so just pick a folder and put that, put, you know, put, put as many pictures as you can get, like five or 10 pictures. Uh, some, if some of these are kind of hard cause they'll put different hotels or whatever than you're trying to advertise for, but you can find some pictures. And I think if you do Red Week, it already has like the Newport Coast pictures in there. So it'll already have that kind of set up for you. So that's one less thing you have to do on there. If you do Airbnb, you know, you got to host it, but you know, hopefully you could get more money on Airbnb and Airbnb is just, they just take 3% of the rental amount to process the credit card. But when you use Airbnb, you know, the money's already collected. They do everything for you, <coughs> not do everything for you, but um, they collect the money, they put the money into escrow. And then the day after they check in, they release all the money to you and then <clears throat> red week and you can trust Airbnb and then set your cancellation policy though. Now you, like if you use Airbnb or whatever, you've got to be mindful of your cancellation policy because <clears throat> some, some you'd have to do like a strict cancellation policy because most timeshares won't allow you to cancel down to the day before, or there's penalties if you cancel it within 30 days or within 60 days, especially if you're using points. So you gotta be mindful because you know about five to 10% of people cancel their reservations. So, um, <clears throat> so always keep in mind that, that when you're when you're putting your cancellation policy in here, be careful on like Airbnb too on your nightly minimums because if you're trying to rent out your whole week. <clears throat> and you and you put a one night minimum well then people could go on and just book one night of it which i mean i guess you could do you would but you would have to call down pay a cleaning fee and let the other people check in for the other nights and you'd have to organize all that i mean it can be done but you know maybe you want to do like a five night minimum on your ad um, or you could even have to do the whole seven nights but then you're depending on somebody picking those exact seven nights there what I usually do is do like a four or five night minimum because usually even if you rent out five or six of the nights, you know, you're usually making enough to make it worth your while a little bit more than the maintenance cost, you know, yada, yada. So <clears throat> you can do that because, you know, say you say instead of charging 3,600 like the resort on Airbnb, you're only going to you're going to charge 3,000. Well, if you only rent it five or six of the nights, say maybe you only net 2,600 to 2,900. You're still almost a thousand over your maintenance and then it's done and you don't have to worry about it because the only bad thing about a week booked ahead is you're you're trying to find somebody who wants that exact week at that exact time you know which is it, it is a little hard even though there's tons of people that go there so <clears throat> be mindful of that be mindful of your cancellation policy um and then same thing on red week be mindful of your cancellation policy uh i think that's it so so if you use these sites, usually the payments already processed, you have the reviews, um, they'll handle the review parts for you. And then like, but if you use like Airbnb, you, once you set up that ad, it's good every year. So every year you just turn it on or turn it off. You can unlist it and then just turn it back on and do the same thing the next year. And then it's always running. And then say you own a week and points, you could even just keep your ad up and then and then leave your calendar open and then people could request, uh, you know, stays from you and you can 
uh, log into your Marriott account or whatever and see if you have dates available or your Wyndham account or your Shell account or whatever, whatever timeshare company you're with. Um, I'm just kind of a Marriott snob. I like Marriott's the best out of all of them. The program's just way, way better. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. So uh, we covered the pricing, we covered the cancellation policy, um, covered uh, what to put in your ads, just kind of copy, not copy what the resorts do, but more or less copy and edit and just change it to your wording so it's not exactly the same. And then obviously the amenities, there's only so much, you know, an amenity is an amenity, so you can click on that find it and then try to and then google the name of the resort find the best times of the year to go there maybe not you would want to go there i like to travel off season i don't like crowds but if you um find the one that's in the mo highest demand because obviously that's when you're going to get your most money all right let me know if you have any questions in the comments uh if you have anything else and then uh, my company can do this for you if you don't want to do it uh so just go to our website timeshare simplified.com and uh, let us know all right. Thanks. God bless.